Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today's video, I don't know if we'll be showing uh, much at all with uh, Working Horses, but it's going to be stuff that we'll be doing in the sawmill and uh, actually working on our horse barn. We have an order right now that we need to get caught up. That's why I'm home and not in the woods. It's a beautiful day and I wish I was in the woods, but there's just stuff I have to get done here. So I decided I better take the day and, and get some stuff done. We have a, um, a part in a, our horse barn that we need to work on. Um, I want to put a six by six in the corner and then we want to put some new doors on the end of our barn. So that's what we work on today. Also, um, we need to saw a little bit of Adirondack siding for a good customer of ours. Um, we're going to use tamarack. I have some eight foot tamarack here and I'm going to slice it into Adirondack siding. This is what we call Adirondack siding. Uh, there's other names for um, brainstorming, I believe some people call it. And there's probably other names too. But uh, I will saw some of that out and show you what that is. I really hate wearing gloves, especially on these warmer days, but this tamarack, or better known as larch, um, has tiny little slivers in it that seem to be able to get into my fingers, and also they have a heavy resin, a pitch, that is extremely sticky, so I do wear gloves quite often when I'm dealing with this wood, but it also makes a really good rot-resistant wood because of that. So what Adirondack siding is, is three quarter inch thick lumber with the bark showing on one edge. As you can see underneath the sawmill, there's a lot of water kind of pouring out from underneath that. I have water in a tank up beside the mill and on this tamarack, I will use a lot of water to flush the blade to keep that pitch from stick into the blade and cause them troubles. Since I have three sides cut clean on this log, the bark side is on the further side where you can't see. So now I'm just sawing down through every three quarters of an inch. Actually, I'm going down seven eighths of an inch because I want to end up with a three quarter inch product 
and the saw kerf um, is an eighth of an inch, so I need to adjust for that. I'm leaving all the boards on this cant because I want to take this lumber straight ahead towards the light in front of the mill when we're done. So I will saw potentially all the way down through this log, but I do want to show you something. So in just a minute, I will actually drag a big pile back to me and explain something to you. My sawdust spout has fallen over so I need to pick that back up again so I can throw the sawdust straight towards the lumber pile and I can get a lot more sawdust in here before I have to clean it out. That works really nice. I've been doing that for several years now. Okay, I'm going to try to explain to people that don't never use Adirondack siding how it works. Um, it's kind of an art to put an Adirondack siding up. This project that I'm working on is for a family of ours that's been great friends for us, um, with us for many years, and they're actually uh, now their grandkids. And I don't think their ages are. I don't think the oldest one is more than. I'm just totally guessing here, but more than. 12, 13 maybe, and they uh, are actually making a sugar house and I believe it's pretty well all by themselves so I'm kind of pleased with able to, to be able to saw this lumber for them because I, I get great satisfaction out of seeing um, kids being out and doing projects like this. So what you do, this is all cut three quarter inches thick, so you will always start, oh, let me see, let's spin this around a bit. Start at the bottom, and then what you do is have a slight overlap on every piece. And continue building up your wall. Until it's all done. Now these are eight foot boards and their building is only eight by eight. So this will work good for the kids. And so it's just the idea of putting an overlap on every one and nail it in such a way that they're on a slight angle like this and uh, um, you get as much show as much as you possibly can to use as few boards as possible some people have a specific way to do it they want to have so much of an overhang or an overlap um, I feel a couple inches is plenty even one inch wouldn't hurt especially in a situation what, what they're doing. There's, it's gonna dry a little bit, but it still generally will be fine. And so this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. Of course, you have to picture this as a, a wall, not laying flat, um, but that's what it looks like. This is tamarack, and I just think it has a nice red color to it and looks great. And so this should make them quite a nice little sugar house for them to be working on. It's not very big, so I expect that these three logs, maybe I'll need one more log, to do enough for them and uh, yeah that's what we're doing at this time and we'll get this done and then we'll go get a 16 foot log for a 6x6.
Okay, so there's one log done. I wanted to show you up here in our wall years ago. This is pine Adirondack siding, and we actually just stuck that up there just so customers could see what they could be buying. This is um, pine, and we try to use sometimes people like really grubby logs, which that one was, with those big knots. And so that's what it can look like as a kind of a really rustic look. And then down here we have another section that just shows a not quite so rustic look, more of a smooth barked pine. And uh, just to give you an idea of what different Adirondack siding can look like. The tamarack that I'm sawing today will not have that really rustic look, but it's just got a, a special different color with the redness to it. So I really like it. And not only that, it will last an awful long time because it's tamarack and tamarack can take the weather really well. So it should make good siding for the kids. Sugar house. So now I need to make a 12 foot six by six for my barn. Over here I have a pile of mostly 16 footers, but let's see what we can find. Maybe we can find a 12 footer in here. It's not very big, but I think it will work. Okay, there you have it, one six by six by 12. Quite a lot of bark shown, but that's okay. That bark down at that end will go in the ground anyways, and uh, it should work just fine. And uh, we'll carry this over to the barn project and try to get it fixed up. So here we are, I believe the next day, and Andy's here to help me. This is my Amish neighbor. I'm glad Andy's here this morning so I don't have to help carry that. Hey. 
So should we try to slide on the concrete that we did before? I think so, yeah. We've already got one post up here. Let's start a hole. This building has a good concrete footer, and then there was cement blocks on top of that to make the partial, the par bottom part of the wall. And I took that all out, so now we have this concrete footer that we're able to use for these six by sixes. So it works out good. The concrete's so uneven right there. Now I got. Concrete. So let's just, has to go that yeah, way. and that's fine. We're going to have to record and batten in here. Yeah. Um, you'll have to. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff around. Okay. Um, and you will only go as far as just oh. concentrate on. Oops. Get some two by fours across here. Yeah. And go for the board and batten here. Yeah. And same with here. Do something just to close it off. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. Whatever over here. Um, but here you can do actual board and batten. And uh, maybe take a two by four and tie this off to hold that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'll figure something. Out. See, I still got a half an hour, so why don't we get that screwed in? Oh, it may not. Matter. And I'll start sliding the dirt in, and you can do what needs to be done by hand.
Hi everybody, it's a very wet day today and this is a continuation of our, our video and uh, as I've said in other videos, sometimes when we start a video it's three or four or five days in the making and this one actually started quite some time ago, three, four, five days ago. And so anyways, I wanted to show you what um, we did finish up that, that day we were working on here and um, Andy actually finished it up for me. He put the boards on the corner here and we have a gate there and the two old um, doors that were here are just leaning up and kind of tied there just to keep it a little bit warmer until we have time to make the, the doors, which are, will be, I'm sure we'll show that when that happens. We weren't gonna show anything to do with the horses on this video, but we decided we've gotta go get some round bales. So we'll show a real quick clip of that so that is still horse related video. We did a little bit of work in this pen right here this morning. Um, and we are going to be in the process, hopefully this afternoon, if the rain slows down, um, to start sorting some of our cattle. And maybe even in an upcoming video, we can show you how that uh, works out for us. Um, Andy is here for the day to help me. So we're trying to get as much stuff done as we can. But for right now, let's go grab a few bales of hay and then we'll call it quits on this video. You guys have a great day. Glad you could stop it and watch what we're doing. Any questions and comments, just put them in down below. And I do want to apologize so often. We get all these questions and our comments and, and I feel so bad because we don't we don't answer so many of them. Um, but we, we try to keep in mind and answer them in a video. Um, it's just too hard and too overwhelming to try to keep up with all the comments with everything else that we have going on. So I do apologize for that, but, but please, please, please don't stop commenting and asking questions. And at some point we hope to get those answered, hopefully in a video. So it's uh, maybe a little bit more clearer than me just, or one of us just writing it down in the comments. So that's it. Have a great day. Yeah. Okay. 